Welcome to the weekly update. I'm Chuck Mayer. It is, we're past Valentine's now, and I want to jump right into the fish this week because there's a lot of stuff happening here at Fishy Business. So let's start with fresh water and we'll roll into salt water. Starting with the Blue Flame Tetras. I've always loved Blue Flame Tetras. We don't always have them, but they're a very, very beautiful Tetra. They have electric blue sheen from about the from about the eye socket all the way back to the tail and a beautiful red and or pink tail depending on how the light hits it. If I had a freshwater tank set up right now that was a planted tank, this is the fish I would use for the pop wow factor. So really beautiful this week and we got a, a nice little group of them. We also have a very simple tetra that I think has a wow factor too because of how the fins uh, are highlighted and it is the blood fin tetra. These came in big this week looking really good with all the color on their tails. Love the blood fins because they really do make another popping wow factor. You can actually mix these two fish together because of the color of their tails and because of the color of the blue tetra's body and really have two really cool schools of fish in a tank that would well offset each other from both the background and themselves. So beautiful, beautiful. Also, rope fish came in looking great. I like this size of rope fish because it's not too big, it's not too small. They actually stay out, these are very relaxed, and as you can see in a school of tiger barbs or fish that are semi-aggressive, it's a great, great fit. Now, we got in a really cool pleco this week. Kevin may even be mentioning it in his, in his spotlight fish, I'm not sure, but we got in the chocolate zebra Pleco. It is a beautiful, beautiful Pleco that I totally missed last week that came in. We still have most of the ones that came in last week. So definitely check out that fish as it will be hidden when you come in here, but it's worth mentioning to Kevin because it's a beautiful, beautiful Pleco. It's at a very reasonable price. Okay, I got the Chilotis Headstanders, which are right here. It's a very beautiful fish. Spots all over it in black and white. Uh, it is a headstander, so it swims like this throughout the whole tank. And you can see if you get a group of them together how cool it looks when they group. This is not as aggressive of a species as the Abramite headstander, which ha is a lot more aggressive fish. However, still practical to put it in with semi-aggressive fish. I have some clown plecos. It's one of my favorite plecos because of how well they eat algae. They do not get very big like the common Plecostomus, but they stay very busy. In freshwater tanks and service, we use the clown plecos a lot because they actually, I think, probably do one of the best algae eating jobs of even the larger plecos because they don't stop. And speaking of algae eating, let's go look at this. It was brought up last week, but I never have them, so I have to bring it up again because when they're gone, they're gone, are the pandagaras, which are these striped fish right here, which are a phenomenal algae eater for the planet aquarium. They won't hurt your plants. They don't get very big. They're very adaptable. They're very cool to look at, very different. And they just have a fantastic algae eating quality if you've got a live planet aquarium. Down here also red chromites came in. We haven't had those in a very, very long time. Tons of live bears, especially balloon mollies came in this week. Discus, we mentioned those a couple of weeks ago, but still have a phenomenal collection of discus. We've sold probably three or four of this large assortment, but I've got a lot of really nice ones still here. I got in a beautiful Cynodonis decorus. Now, Cynodonis are primarily an African cichlid or high pH catfish. And a lot of people that have African cichlids, especially if you're new to African cichlids, you're like, geez, I want one other type of fish to put in there. Well, the answer is Cynodonis. And Cynodonis come in a lot of flavors and a lot of colors and a lot of shapes and a lot of sizes. The Cynodonis decorus and the Angelicus, which I don't have right now, are two of the most prominent of those types of fish. And as you can see, the Cynodonis decorus is gorgeous. We got in also a lot of epistogrammas this week. I got epistogramma cockatoides, I got epistogramma agazizi, and I think there is a third species that came in this week. Uh, the cockatoides aren't showing up yet, but it is one of my favorite of the epistogrammas. It is just a showy little fish. If you have a nano tank or even a small tank and want a non-super aggressive cichlid, that you can kind of keep a brood or a group of them, 
It's a great fish, especially for planted tanks. Okay, so as you can see, we are in the thick of putting out the saltwater fish that came in today. Uh, the shipment arrived a little bit late, and Grace has been, as you can see, has tons of stuff to put out today. So we also have uh, another major part of that marine shipment coming tomorrow. So we're a little slow on the video this week as far as getting stuff out, but you can come kind of do the over the shoulder thing, and I'll throw some things out at you that did come in today as they're getting out. Uh, one thing you can definitely notice as soon as you walk through here are Gracie got snails. We have snails to sell. And every tech I think she must have gotten a killer deal on snails. Yeah, because you <laughs> like to take all my snails off. I like to take all the snails. Well, so what? I have a lot of service accounts and I need the algae clean. And if you watch the algae video that we shot a couple of days ago, you'll know that you cannot have too many snails and Gracie has made proof of that this week. Gracie will not have to scrub algae in any of the tanks you see the snails in in the week to come. Now, moving from there, she did get in a super little group of firefish. Firefish are so cool in a marine aquarium because they will school in a little patch and make a little home in an aquarium. I've got three tanks in service where I've got a group of them, and I'm telling you, they can become a focal point very easy. And they're not expensive and they're fantastic. We got a little six line rice in here, uh, probably the biggest scissor tail gobies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, we sell out of them every week because again, this is a great fish to actually school in a saltwater tank. They do well, they go in eating, they're hardy. As you can see, they haven't been in the tank 10 minutes and all four that she's got right there are schooling together. Uh, also, you can see we've got uh, chocolate chip stars back in stock. Lots of shrimp, lots of invertebrates, yeah. leopard grass. I got the yellow watchman gobies. Yellow watchman gobies. I got a chalk bass. Tiger sand sifting goby. Tiger sand sifting goby. A lot of other starfish yeah. I see. I got a lot of chocolate chips. I got some. Uh, there are different types yeah. of starfish. I don't know, I'm trying to remember what the name was, but there's one that's actually blue. Um, oh yeah. Oh cool. Oh yeah. Kind of a chocolate chip-ish starfish, but he's blue. Or a gray blue. Or green, depending on your eyesight. So yeah, so you can see we're kind of in the thick of putting out saltwater fish right now. Uh, I'm sure Gracie will post some stuff on both Instagram and on the Facebook and look for some stuff that will definitely come in tomorrow. Uh, tangs and things like that, because we've got a lot of cool things coming your way. So. I will, uh, I will actually end the video right here, but before I go, here are your picks for the week. Hi, and this is Kevin. I'm the freshwater manager here at Fishy Business. I've got two fish I'd like to show you that we got in this week that look exceptional. First being the chocolate zebra plecosimus. Really pretty little plecosimus. Doesn't get much larger than four to five inches at the very largest. Really good show piece for any tank. Not aggressive, but do supplement their diet by having a piece of driftwood in there for fiber. I've also got some red tail hemiotis down here, which look very similar to a bela shark, very similar in temperament as well. Do really well in a kind of a semi-aggressive or a large community tank. Those are my picks of the week. My name is Grace. We're going to do the top pick of the week. My top pick this week is the coral cat shark, also known as the uh, barbaratus. They are a species of ground sharks um, that are on the bottom of the ocean, obviously. Um, kind of in the lower or shallow coral areas. They get close to about three feet. So starting off small, like the ones that I have currently, a 180 is sufficient for them in their juvenile stage. But once they start to make their way up to three feet, I would say at least to 300 and, and up. Um, and that's minimum. So you can't keep a shark that's this big in a, in a 180 gallon tank long term. Um, and anybody will tell you that anywhere you look it up, it'll tell you that as well. Um, but that, that is my top pick. Um, other than that, they're, they're beautiful. It's just something really cool to have in your tank that's different. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, so Scotty Pockets, you got anything? No. 
Okay, that's what he said he was gonna say. That's not, actually, that's not what he said he was gonna say. He said he was gonna say something way worse than that. <laughs> He's been putting out stuff all day. This is the end of the video. We wish you a great week, weekend, Scotty. And I'm kidding, we've got lots of great stuff. Cool. So, come see us this weekend. We got a lot going on, and there are a lot more fish that I couldn't show you that I haven't even made it here yet. So, have a great week, and thanks for tuning in.